Welcome to my commercial service calculation, specifically a restaurant. We'll be using the standard method here. Now, if you want the optional method, I have another video on that. Please check out my channel for, for that. I'm calling this a crash course because it's going to be fairly fast paced, but I am going to get into some detail. So it's kind of like a partial deep dive because I'm going to point out the differences that a restaurant has as far as its requirements than like say an office building or a school or a store or something like that. Now this is going over the 2023 code, but there really hasn't been much change at all from 2020 to 2023. Mostly it's just in the code reference articles. They've changed the numbering and switched some things around a little bit in 220, but everything as far as the methodology and your outcome is going to be the, the same as 2020. Also, if you do want to go into a deep dive, if you want to find every detail and every code reference and, and really get into the nitty gritty, please check out my deep dive video on commercial service calculations. It goes very deep and, and ferrets out every detail and it leaves no stone unturned. So check that out if you are interested in that. Okay, here is a table that I've developed and it shows you a very quick and easy and simple format. Very easy to follow. It, it gives you all the code references here for each step along the way and you end up with a total VA and an amp total for the building. I'll go through this really briefly here about kind of how it's laid out and then we'll jump right into the example. Okay, you're going to start with your square footage of your building and then you're going to find your multiplier from table 220.42a. That's going to give you your minimum lighting load. Then you're going to apply a demand factor and get your lighting demand load. Then you're going to jump into your lighting, your specialty lighting, like show window, track, and sign and outline lighting. Then we're going to take receptacle loads. We're going to add all these together and get a subtotal. We're going to slide that up here to the other column, and we're going to go for our other loads. And these are basically any other loads beyond what we've already covered. And those are all defined in 220.14a through e and k. Then we're going to get into kitchen equipment, which is treated special, and that's especially important in this calculation since it's a restaurant. And then we're going to take our heating and cooling, our non-coincident loads, and then our largest motor. And once we tally all these up, we'll have our total building VA, and we can divide by our voltage and get our service amps. Okay, so here is our example. We have a restaurant, of course. It's 7,200 square feet. We've got some lighting track. We've got some show window lighting. We have a receptacle load given to us. We have some ceiling fans, exhaust fans, air conditioning unit, a hood fan. We have some hand dryers. Now our heating is gas. That's important. And our grills are gas. And then we have our kitchen equipment and I won't list these off. We'll get to those as we put them into the calculation. And then our service is going to be 120 to 8 volt three phase and we're going to try to find our total calculated service load. Okay, so we have all of our data over here and we're going to start plugging this into our chart. We're going to start up here on the left and we're going to start by getting the square footage of our building. And we are told that we have 7,200 square feet. So we're just going to plug 7,200 in right here. Then we need to get our multiplier from table 220.42a. Table 220.42a is a table that lists a bunch of different occupancy types here on the left side. And then it gives you a volt amp per square foot on the right. We're going to go down, follow this down to restaurant, which is right here. And we're going to get 1.5 as our multiplier. So our multiplier is 1.5. We're going to put it right there. 7,200 times 1.5 is 10,800 VA. And that gives us our minimum lighting load. Okay, so now we're going to try to get our lighting load demand factor. And we're going to go to table 220.45 to get that. Table 220.45 is lighting load demand factors. And you'll see that it has four sections here. Dwelling units, hotels, motels, and apartment houses warehouses and then everything else. Well, our restaurant doesn't fall into any of these categories. So we have to go with the all others. And it's going to tell us that we have to take a hundred percent demand factor. So we get no break for a restaurant. So our lighting load demand factor is hundred percent. So 10,800 is our lighting demand load. Next up, we're going to jump into our specialty lighting. We'll start with our show window lighting. We are told that we have 70 feet of show window lighting. So 70 feet times 200 VA per linear foot, that gives us 14,000 VA. 
But since the show window lighting is going to be on for more than three hours, it's got a continuous load. So we go to take an extra 25% and add it to that 14,000. And that's going to give us 17,500. We're going to have to do that same thing with the next two of these also. Moving on to our track lighting, we're told in 220.46b that we take 150 VA per two foot of track. Well, we're told we have eight four foot section of track. So eight times four is 32 feet, but we're only taking every two foot section. So divide by two, that gives us 16 feet times 150 VA. And we come up with 2,400 VA. Now 2,400 VA times 125% is 3,000 VA. Okay, our sign and outline lighting. Now we're not told anywhere here that we have sign and outline lighting, but this is one of those situations where we are required to put at least one in any building, any building that is that has a pedestrian entrance. So this being a restaurant, we definitely have a pedestrian entrance. So we've got to put a minimum of one circuit in and 220.14F tells us that circuit has to be a minimum of 1200 watts. So 1200 watts times our 125% because these signs and outline lighting will definitely be on for more than three hours gives us 1500 VA. Okay, jumping on to our receptacle loads, we got 3,600 VA receptacle loads. So that's nice. They gave us the total right there. We didn't have to count the receptacles and add up, you know, 180 VA per receptacle. They just give it to us. So now we have a choice with receptacle loads. We can either choose table 220.47 or 220.45. Now 220.45 tells us that we just have to take 100%. Remember, that's the table we looked at up here, 220.45. And it told us that any commercial building is 100% demand factor. So generally, we won't be using that one. We'll almost always choose table 220.47. And what 220.47 tells us is demand factors for non-dwelling receptacle loads. Now, this is a portion of receptacle load to which demand factor applies. So the first 10,000 VA or less, we take at 100%. Anything over that, we take at 50%. So this would be beneficial to us if our load is over 10,000 VA. Now ours is not, ours is only 3,600 VA. So it doesn't matter either table we take here, it's gonna be 100% demand factor. So in our case, it's, it's a moot point. But if we did have anything over 10 KVA, this would benefit us because the remainder over 10,000 VA, we could take at 50%. Okay, so now once we have these numbers, all these bold ones, we just add these together and we come up with 36,400 VA for our subtotal. Okay, we're gonna slide that subtotal right up here to this column and now we're gonna go take our other loads. So you see the loads over here in bold, we have six 180 watt ceiling fans. So that's 1080 VA. We have three 200 watt exhaust fans, that's 600 VA. We have a 16,000 watt air conditioning unit, but instead of putting that here under other loads, we're gonna drop it down here under cooling because usually we're comparing the cooling to the heating to find out which of our non-coincident loads we're gonna take. Next, we have a 2,700 watt hood fan, 2,700 watts, and we have two 1,600 watt hand dryers, 3,200 VA. Okay, and that does it for our other loads. Now our hood fan, you might say, well, wait a minute, isn't that in the kitchen? It is in the kitchen, but the kitchen equipment provision 220.56 specifically excludes any HVAC. So any heating, ventilation, or air conditioning is excluded from kitchen equipment. So we have to put the hood fan up here under other loads. And speaking of kitchen equipment, we go to 220.56 and it tells us that we just count up our number of units of equipment in our kitchen, and then we take the corresponding demand factor. In our case, we have 21 pieces of kitchen equipment. This chart goes down to five and then anything over five, so six and over, gets a 65% demand factor. So that's gonna be our demand factor. So we just total all of our loads together and you'll probably have to do this on a separate sheet of paper. And it comes to 68,930 watts or VA. We're gonna multiply that by our 65% demand factor and we come to 44,805 VA. Okay, so now we're gonna compute our heating. Now, if you remember, we have gas heating, so we really don't have much of a heating load. Now, there is still gonna be some load here for the fan to blow the, the gas heated air throughout the building, 
but we don't really know what that load is going to be. So we're just going to put negligible because we know that in the next step, we're going to be comparing it to cooling. And let's just go on to the next step now. So the non-coincident loads under 220.60, you're supposed to take the largest of the two. So if there are two loads that don't operate at the same time or are not likely to, you just take the larger of the two. In this case, our cooling is going to be a much larger load than the heating because the heating is all gas and then the cooling and heating both use the same fan only at different times. So the cooling will be a lot more. So we're going to take the 16,000 VA for the cooling and we're going to ignore the heating. Lastly, we have to find our largest motor of the building. Normally that's going to be the AC even in a restaurant. Now you might have some large pieces of kitchen equipment that may be a larger motor. You know, you may have a dough machine or something like that. Uh, that, that might be a larger motor than the AC, especially if you have multiple AC units that are a little bit smaller. But in our case, we're going to assume that the AC is the largest motor of the building. And so we're going to take an extra 25% of the 16,000 VA, which is 4,000 VA. And we're going to add that into the calculation. Once we have those numbers, we just add all these bold numbers together and we come up with 108,785 VA for the building total. Then we just divide by our voltage, which first we have to multiply by the square root of three because it's three phase. And we come up with 302 amps. Now we can size our feeders, we can size our conduit, our service, our overcurrent protection devices, etc. And it's really as simple as that. Now here I just took all the color out and, and took all the data out so you can screenshot this, you can make copies, use it as a worksheet, whatever you want to do with it, practice, or, or print up a bunch of them and use them on the job site, use them in the field, uh, have at it. Okay, thanks for watching guys, I really appreciate your time. If you like the video, please give me a like, and if you haven't subscribed, please do that, it really helps me out a lot. I have a lot of other videos on my channel, I have a 2020 series and a 2023 series that I'm working through right now. And I have others as well. I have one totally on non-coincident loads. I have ranges. I have dryer calcs, all that. So please check the channel out and I will see you next time.